Hi, I'm Alison from Technology and Education and I have Mark Prensky here with me today. Um, he's a well-known international writer about education and also about technology. Mark has written quite a few books, but I'm really interested in the last two books that you've written, Mark. Mm -hmm. One is about the digital natives, which is really, really interesting. So thank you very much for having the time to share with me. But the other one's all about the brain. So I've got a couple of questions I'd like to ask you, and just to help share out with our audience what you know you actually do. So the first question I've got is, basically, can you just share your thoughts about digital wisdom for us? Sure, sure. The what's happening today with our brains is that we're not. To totally understanding them because brain science and neuroscience is very early, but what's happening is that the brain is being extended by technology. And it's going, many pieces are being added of things that we couldn't do before in terms of communication, in terms of using trillions of data points, in terms of many things, the technology is extending our brain. And digital wisdom is figuring out how to use our human brain for the things that it does the best and combine it wisely with technology for the things that the human brain can't do well enough. That's fantastic. You're also an innovator and you're a visionary and you've got some really great ideas in your book. One of the things is about you put the brain and connect it to technology and then they've got this interconnectedness. So can you just explain a little bit about how you can see them moving in the future together? Sure. The, one of the things that, that is really important in humans has always been judgment. But to make judgments, we often need data. And once we start using a lot of data, we need machines, we need computers. So it's really important that our students start to understand how to put their own human judgment together with the kinds of computing, for example, that computers and that machines do well. Right. Now, I've got two more questions for you, and this one is particular to, to teachers. So what can you do to help teachers? What would be the one thing that you could say to teachers to get them to start to implement digital technologies and make that connection with integration to help with young children? I call it imagination. The most important thing with technology is not actually physically using it. Kids know how to do that pretty well. The most important thing to think about is how it works and how it will help us. What are the powerful uses of technology? Just typing is not a powerful use of technology, it's just doing old things in new ways. But Skyping and tweeting with people around the world, using 3D printing, using simulation, using virtual worlds, those are things that people, young people, but all people could never do before. And it's very important to think about how those things enhance what we try to do in the classroom. That's fantastic. We've also got a group out there that are parents. Now, parents have these young children, they're coming, the children know exactly what's happening with, with digital technologies, it's their world. But we have parents that are struggling, and probably the ones that, like myself, that have the Gen Y children, and they're just wondering how out there the technologies are gonna be able to support them. And the one thing would be, what else is the digital technology gonna do to that child. A lot, of, a lot of parents are worried about the play-based learning and they're also worried about these di digital technologies taking over their children and their play. So could you give the parents sure. some advice? Sure. With only a few exceptions, and we hear about the exceptions on TV all the time, the digital technologies are going to make your kid much better. They're going to have many more opportunities and much more powerful tools for creation than kids have ever had in the world and really parents should not be afraid of this. The biggest message that I would leave for parents is please talk to your kid. When you see your kid playing a lot of games or using a screen a lot, ask them why do you like this so much? What are you getting out of it that you don't get from other things? 
as parents, we've got to keep our kids safe, we have to help them balance their lives, but we shouldn't impose our values from a pre-digital era on the kids when it's inappropriate. Thanks, Mark. We have both just been at the Young Minds Conference. You've been a, a speaker for us. You've come a long way from America to here to present to the audience. We had a great session with you on stage. We've had a more interesting session today of a small group. And the whole Young Minds Conference was all about how to be a good person. So for a parent and a teacher out there right now, that question of how to be a good person um, I think we learned so many things. What is one key message that you'd like to leave us with today? Again, the key message is listening. And so many people put it, we had the Dalai Lama at the conference and he listened beautifully to the children. And we had uh, Carla Rinaldi from Reggio Emilia and she talked about the pedagogy of listening. And the more I go around the world and talk to kids, the more I hear them say, we're not listened to enough. People don't trust us enough. And that's so important that we do that and that we listen and of course balance with our own judgment about what's good, but that we not impose our values from the past on the kids of the future. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to meet you and a pleasure to get your books and we will be in touch. Thank you very much. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you.